happens, I believe. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to ask some tough ones, Pion. So, I mean, basic emergency ops Tetric care. Are you suggesting that that's going to solve climate change? I mean, is climate change for real or not? Climate change is absolutely a real issue, yes. But it's not going to be fixed with basic obstetric care. The, the whole point that I tried to make here is that we have many different issues, and in some ways, you have just climate taking almost all the oxygen out of the room for all the other things we also need to talk about. So India has this incredible opportunity to say, look, we get that climate change is an issue. We should absolutely talk about climate. Let's do it smartly. But let's also talk about all these other things that are important, like mom's dying like good education, like making sure we have good nutrition and, 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 uh, uh, and health care. So there are many issues, not just one. Now then, then the argument is that perhaps you are digressing and distracting because uh, in the last round of uh, Paris talks on climate change, we had the West, the developed world essentially promising $100 billion uh, and the money is not coming. So are you sort of uh, suggesting, oh, please uh, don't talk about climate change because we don't have the money? <laughs> so, first of all, I'm not speaking for the whole Western world, but, uh, but it's very clear that the Western world loves to lecture on climate and loves to tell everyone you should do more about climate change, but very often we don't ourselves, and when it starts costing money, we obviously become a lot more resident. So I think it just tells you the general truth that you know very well and everyone knows, namely that we love to speak big words, but we actually have to find policies that are both efficient and reasonably cheap. And that's what India can bring to this, a sort of realism in the climate conversation and a realism that allows us to have a conversation about all the other challenges. But you see, Bjorn, so it seems that over the last two decades at least, and possibly more, an attempt has been made to create a picture of oh, climate change is coming and the penguins are drowning and uh, it's going to have consequences uh, for us here. Uh, Penguins are drowning because uh, the Arctic snow is melting, uh, Antarctic actually. And, uh, and then, you know, we have to stop using fossil fuels. Uh, just to give you an example, one single person in the rich world uses more fossil fuels than all the energy available to 23 poor African countries. Now, that's the scale of fossil fuel consumption that has really uh, led to the growth and development that we have seen in the West. So was climate change then a plan, even a conspiracy perhaps, to sort of uh, scuttle the growth in the East, in the South? I, I don't think it was ever designed that way, but it very well can come across that way, that, you're, that we're basically having a lot of rich people who got rich because they used fossil fuels that are now kicking away the ladder and say, no, sorry, you can't do that anymore. Uh, I, I th my favorite uh, statistic is that California, which has 39 million inhabitants, use more energy on heating their swimming pools than all of Uganda, which has 44 million inhabitants, use in electricity. There's something wrong in that sort of world. And very clearly, it is immoral to say that poor or poorer countries do not have the opportunity to develop. And so what we should do is, when we talk about climate change, because eventually we have to get rid of fossil fuels, we can only do that through innovation a way that means we all want to transition because it's cheaper, not because it's phenomenally more costly. That's the solution to climate, but it's also a way to walk back our fear, right? The fear of, oh, we're gonna get these intense heat waves and everybody's gonna die from heat. Yes, there is a problem here, and much of the way to solve that is by making sure that people have better infrastructure, that they're more resilient, that they have air conditioning. But it's also a way to say, let's talk about all the other issues. Well, uh, you, I don't know if you've heard about this thing. Uh, Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and he would be coming here uh, in the evening and addressing us and our larger audience. Uh, uh, he talks about life, which is uh, uh, lifestyle changes, which uh, take care of some aspects of climate change. Uh, but we don't see uh, the West, for example, willing to address that because I think you might find some 
consensus uh, between you and uh, what Prime Minister is suggesting that a lot of issues about climate change, particularly this aspect of per capita consumption of fossil fuels, can be addressed if you change your lifestyle adequately. Yeah, and it can't. I mean, look, it's all, I'm all for changing your lifestyle. It's great to have a bicycle. I, I have a bicycle. I go a lot of places on bicycle. But I didn't bike here. I flew on a commercial airline. Right? And, and we've got to be honest about this fact that in order to get rich, you need a lot of energy. India needs a lot of energy, China needs a lot of energy, and we've forgotten about the fact that Africa still don't have very much energy, and they certainly also want energy. The world runs on energy. We need smarter and cheaper green energy before people are going to transition. That's why you don't have the Germans or anyone else to actually transitioning. But beyond then, you are sort of trying to eat your cake and have it too, because just last week we had those headlines coming in from Germany where they have shut down last of the nuclear power plants, and that's a clean, efficient energy yes, source, yes. you would agree, and they're going back to coal. Yes, it's ridiculous. And Germany goes back to coal, and they say, oh, India shouldn't be polluting. It's absolutely ridiculous, and, and, and I have to say, I'm not, trying to, so, <laughs> I'm not trying to have my cake and eat it. I'm trying to make sure that we don't promise to have a cake that we, don't, we can't actually afford. We need to make promises that we can actually deliver, and we need to deliver promises that the world wants. We just saw that on the list of what is it the world wants. They want education, they want health, they want nutrition. They want these very, very simple things. Let's make sure we deliver on that. We should also deliver on climate, but we'll only ever do that if it's sufficiently cheap and effective. And that's what you're seeing with Germany. They don't want to deliver on it if it actually means they'll be cold. But then, so let's, let's make it the last exchange then. Uh, can we have a New Delhi consensus on uh, a collaboration between the East and the West where the issue of climate change is treated, taken together with climate justice, and then you move forward. Climate justice means that the development imperatives of nations like India and, of course, the global South, including Africa, are also taken into account when you want to move forward on a very difficult subject like climate change. So you just left the hardest question to the very last. Yes, I think we can. We need to recognize that the rich world has fixed all the other problems. And so we basically just want to talk about climate change, climate change, climate change. You have to keep reminding us, I'm sorry, there's still about five or six billion people who would like to also have good education and health and all these other things. Let's make sure we do the smart stuff, yes, on climate, but also on all the other issues. All right, they would want their health and education and everything, but they would also want their cars and ACs, perhaps, and that's what the consensus has to be about. Thank you so much on that, yes. Nudbjörn. Thank you very much. Thank you.